People don't rise from the dead. Luke says it in one sentence. These words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. Which leaves us with the question, will we believe them or not? Are we going to stake our faith on the testimony of a handful of women who may have spent too much time at the laundromat? Or are we going to stand with these disciples and their good sense who may unfortunately be underestimating the power of God? Regardless of which side you take, it is belief that is at stake here. Luke begins his gospel with a word to Theophilus, his reader, saying that he has gathered up firsthand information from eyewitnesses and ministers of the word so that Theophilus can believe that what he has heard about Jesus is the truth. It's my conviction that the whole gospel of Luke was written to restore the shaky faith of Theophilus and others like him. They had believed that Jesus was the Messiah. That's what they had heard. They believed that he died and rose again. But then these others came along who began to say to them, Check your Bibles. Nowhere in the Old Testament does it say that the Messiah is supposed to suffer and die. The Messiah is supposed to conquer and rule. Jesus suffered and died. Therefore, Jesus is not the Messiah. And so the faith of Theophilus and others like him was shaken. As they looked through the Old Testament, sure enough, they couldn't find anywhere that it said the Messiah would suffer. And so Luke wrote this gospel, this whole gospel, to convince them of the truth of what they had heard, that Jesus really was the Messiah who had been promised to them from long ago, that it really was necessary for him to suffer and die, and that he really did rise from the dead. For some 23 chapters now in this gospel, Luke has been telling his reader about Jesus about what he did and how he taught, the sermons he preached, the miracles he performed. When he gets to this last chapter of the gospel, after he has told the story of Jesus' suffering and death, he tells three stories of resurrection. And in each of these, the truth of the resurrection is revealed more clearly. In this first scene, two men in dazzling clothes, tell some women that Jesus is risen, but they don't see Jesus. They don't have any visible proof. In the next scene, two disciples walk with Jesus on the way to Emmaus, and in the breaking of bread at the dinner table that night, they recognize him for who he is. In the last scene in chapter 24, Jesus removes all doubt by appearing to his disciples and eating a piece of broiled fish in front of them. In no other gospel is the physical reality of the resurrection made so startlingly clear. Luke wants us to know Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. But we don't share the disciples' privilege. We haven't stood in that upper room with the risen Christ. We haven't walked along that road to Emmaus with him. In so many ways, we are like the disciples in this first scene. Someone has come to us and said, Christ is risen. And we have to decide whether or not we can believe them. The evidence that these women present to the disciples is mighty thin, isn't it? Someone else told them about the resurrection. All they have to go on for sure is their memory of what Jesus said to them and the puzzling sign of the empty tomb. When they come to the disciples and tell them that Christ is risen, the disciples have to decide whether or not this tale is trustworthy. And when they come to us, we have to make the same sort of decision. Can we believe what they are saying? Or do we, like those disciples, give them that look? 
the one that says this is just another story invented to pass the time. You know how women talk. Luke wants us to know that no matter what we think of other women, we should only think the best of these. He mentions some of them by name. There is Mary Magdalene and Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, some others, not just any women, Luke says, but these women, women whose names should ring a bell. And sure enough, if you turn back to Luke chapter 8, you will find some of these same women mentioned among those who traveled along with Jesus and the other disciples and provided for them out of their means. Mary Magdalene and Joanna, at least, were among those who were with Jesus in Galilee. And apparently they were standing within earshot when Jesus told his disciples for the first time that he was on his way to Jerusalem where he would suffer and die and on the third day rise. 